Hello, you hello YouTubers, diecast collectors, it's Jared White, the J Man 63, and today I have a very special diecast model review for you guys. These are my first three Highway 61s. I the only three I was really interested in. This is John Wick 69 Mustang Boss. If you've seen the movies, this is probably one of my favorite action movies of the newer era of uh, the 2000s, uh, 2010s, <laughs> I should say, because that's about when this movie came out was, I forget exactly the history and then how long the, when the movies were coming out, but I think I first saw this movie it was 2017, 16, and ever since I've been watching them in the theaters, I think Parabellum came out last year. And they come out with them like every two or one or two years. And uh, I think I remember seeing the second one, 2018. So I think it was either 2016 or 17 when this first came out. So very good movie franchise. If you haven't seen John Wick, highly recommend going to see it as I get this car unboxed for you guys. Now, there's no tape on these. So be aware that there's absolutely no tape. And right away when you get this car out, you notice how deep the paint is. I just stepped on a packing peanut. That wasn't anything breaking. Um, so here is the car. It's a 118. I see the seats is uh, folded forward. Oops. And right away, we can see that these seats do indeed slide forward and slide backward, which is one of the cooler features I've seen on a uh, 118th scale uh, die-cast model. And it looks like there is some tape we have to kind of get off. We're just going to use our box knife. We're just gonna use the box knife and then I'll put more tape there when I need to put it on. This model is absolutely amazing. Just super well done. You can see how deep that paint, that it's almost like a dark green. Now I remember in the first movie, he one of the thugs says it's a 60, it was like a 68, and I think John Wick cracks him and says him, says it's a different year, corrects him on the year based on the movie. I haven't seen it in a while, so you'll have to forgive me if all my facts aren't straight, but it's a very good movie. John Wick isn't the boogeyman. He's the one you send to kill the boogeyman. This car cost me quite a bounty, I'll say that much. All right, so we're going to try to get it out this way. Let's see if we can. Yeah, there we go. I got it out. Okay, perfect. All right, this is exactly how I wanted it to kind of come out. So on the outside, I'm almost ashamed to get fingerprints all over this car, the hood. Now, if you all know how a normal gas cap operates on one of these, this is where you fill the gas at. A couple of these Highway 61 cars have license plates that flip up and reveal the gas cap. But as you can see, this car has working suspension. There's working suspension. The front wheel steer along with the steering wheel. Um, very deep green paint. You can see that there's an actual marker reflector there. That's not a uh, that is not a, a sticker. These are actual marker reflectors. And if you look at the grill, 
It's an actual mesh grill. You can see through the front, unlike that Gambler Mustang that I reviewed, that Boost M2 car. But that was 124 scale. This is 118th. So on the M2 model, I find that a little more uh, passable. And even in this, the rear, the suspension works. Now the drive shaft is supposed to rotate, but for some reason on mine, it is not wanting to uh, rotate. I have no idea why. That's weird. So I guess the drive shaft on this one doesn't rotate. That's odd. I'm trying to like uh, get it to move. That's weird. So the drive shaft does work, but for some reason on mine example, it's not wanting to rotate. So anyway, that's a bit of a bummer, but that's okay. I don't really mind. On my auto worlds, they seem to rotate more smoothly, but it seems to want to move. But I guess with a little rolling around, I guess you could get it to a uh, free up. Because that's the way I did it on my auto world. Once I rolled the wheels around enough, that freed up the drive shaft a bit more. And if you look at the suspension, the leaf springs actually work. So now we'll go on to the end. We'll go on to what it, I think is the main part of the uh, car. And that is it's. Well, first off, I'll show you one cool feature. I think the antenna comes up. Well, the antenna doesn't really come up and down, but for some reason, the one on my example is either stuck or something, or I just don't want to um, mess it up. But the antenna is pretty solid. It's made out of a nice metal. It's not just made out of a uh, piece of cheapo chrome plastic. It's made out of a nice metal. Now let's look underneath the hood. Because this is the main part I've been wanting to see. And you can hear the hinges make that noise as they open. I need to have better lighting in here so you all can kind of see this uh, motor. But... Look at how detailed the engine is here compared to a lot of models you can get into the 118th scale. I'm not saying green light doesn't make a nicely detailed 118th, but um, some of the chrome here on the other side, it looks like uh, they had a bit of an issue with the chrome, but I don't know if it's supposed to be like this because the other side seems to have some uh, flashing issues and I would be very careful handling this car. Well, it's not that bad. I can't really tell that badly, but it seems like the rocker cover, the rocker bottom has uh, some, uh, has a slight bit of flashing. But the Highway 61 model so far is the highest quality one I've seen in my collection out of all the stuff I've owned. And the hood closes really nicely on these spring and scissor hood hinges, as you can see. You just kind of shut it like that. Now, the interior really is where this car uh, makes its mark. Um, first off, I'm going to show the seats. There's a lot to show off here in the interior. The uh, passenger side, seat tilts forward. 
if you can see that, the seat tilts forward. And it also slides forward and backward. See, you'd almost think you could get in, in case your passengers don't have enough leg room, you can adjust the seats. One other cool feature about this car is I think the sun visors flip up and down. Let me see here. Let me check. Let me check and make sure. Yeah. Check that out, guys. Working sun visors. You know how when you're in a car and the sun is getting in your face? Well, with this model, the sun won't get in your face. <laughs> it's pretty dang cool, man. And uh, if John Wick needs to keep any of those speeding tickets... Let me see if it does it. Yeah, if John Wick needs to keep any of his guns or any of his stuff handy, the glove box actually opens on this model. See, look. Glove box actually freaking opens on this thing, guys. Look at how detailed the wood paneling is on this thing. Man. So yeah, if John Wick needs to keep his guns handy or his uh, tickets, so his speeding tickets from getting away from the mob, um, you got the glove box there. Not that it actually happened in the movie. I'm just kind of halfway joking here. But, you know, on a die cast model that size, it's pretty incredible to see something like that. And I had very few models with a glove box that actually opens. That's pretty damn cool. If you look on the side here, the uh, wheels actually work with the steering wheel. They're not tied. They're tied to it, but I don't think it returns to center. But look at how nicely done this is. And yeah, the sun visors actually do fold up and down, which is a pretty incredible detail on this model. But as you can see, as I move the wheels, the steering wheel moves with them. And the doors actually open and shut really nice. On the underside here, you can see that the leaf springs actually work. Actually, you know what? Before I get onto the underside, I'm going to show off the trunk because I think it's important to show how much detail that Highway 61 really puts into their models. So let me show you that trunk right there. Look at how well done that is with the battery and you got the jack. You even have the jacking instructions underneath the trunk. I will say this trunk area, man. For as small as it is, they really detailed it up nicely. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty much trunk area right there. Uh, uh, for a $120 price point with a car with working suspension, and the antenna is pretty solid, so... I don't think the antenna actually folds up and down on this one for some reason. If it does, then uh, it's very stiff, but this is a nice model. The fact the antenna is there and it's really well done uh, really shows a lot. Um, underneath here, you have your actual brake lines. Uh, there is a lot to look at.
Now the drive shaft, for some reason, is supposed to rotate. And I'll either figure this out at some point, but you have actual suspension in the rear. You can see the springs underneath there. But my one thing I really think is cool about this car, look at how deep the wheels are, man. I mean, normally a Maisto is not going to have this kind of deep detailing on. You even got the Firestone wide oval uh, tire detail on there. The tires are just amazingly done, and so are the uh, deep chrome. Either these are keystones or some kind of a an American racing wheel on here, but this is just goes super deep. Like I said, for 130 bucks, you de or 120 bucks, depending on what site you get it off of, you're definitely going to be getting your money's worth in terms of the details that you get on here. Now, unfortunately, my phone does not have enough space to get video, and I was having an issue with my SD card, so I'm going to have to uh, get video later on, or I'm going to get pictures later for Facebook, but this is just such a nice car. Every single time you look at something, you notice something new or you notice a new detail on it, it just kind of pops out at you. It's just really nicely done. And you can even hear those uh, springs kind of make a noise of tension as you open the hood. I just look at how detailed that mesh grill is in there and all the engine and stuff you got going on. And that is, I will say, those uh, the Windsor and the Cleveland uh, Ford motors are very massive in, in these cars. And if you've ever seen what a... Uh, a Ford 429, uh, either a Windsor or a Cleveland motor looks like. Usually the difference between a Windsor and a Cleveland motor is the heads on the engine. Now I couldn't really tell you which is which, but they were named the Windsor and Cleveland because they were either manufactured in Cleveland, Ohio or Windsor, Detroit. So it's just a super well done piece given the uh, space limitations they have to work with in there. And it's almost like how I do one of my Lego models when I build something like that. Now I'm shutting the hood. I will say the door is open really nice. The only thing missing on this one, I will say, is seat belts. They missed the little seat belt detail, but that's that's just fine in my book. Um, I really don't mind that there's no seat belts on this thing. This is a pretty good little detailed model. Um, see if I got the drive shaft freed up yet by rolling it. I have not gotten the drive shaft freed up for some reason. It's not one to rotate, but that's fine. Just as long as they have the drive shaft painted on a different color and the underside still incredibly well detailed. So yeah, the only one I've seen that compares to this uh, detail point at this price is the auto world models. I really like this one. Yeah, this shines is a really good example. I mean, the chrome is beautiful. I mean, you're not going to find much pitting on the chrome. Highly well done. Very good model. So uh, make sure that if you do get one of these to review it, because life's too short not to enjoy your models and take them out of the packaging, in my opinion. Um but, I mean, yeah, there's just something new every time you look. I mean, you can see the marker lights back here have a lens inside of them, inside the chrome. And that's just extremely well done. It's hard, really, for any of my stuff to stand out because I got so much of it. But, you know, um, I mean, 
Yeah, just something new every time you look at these cars. I look at the interior. They actually have, in case your passenger's feet get dirty, you have rubber floor mats. Now, there's no flocking on any of these, the interior flocking, but in case your passenger's feet are dirty, you have actual rubber floor mats in here. Ain't that something? Now, I don't have very well enough light, but if you could look, you could see it. But they have real deal rubber floor mats. It's pretty funny. I got to say, this is a shining example of a, a really well detailed model. Um, I think there were two versions of this they came out with. One had a slightly darker grayish paint, and then this has the paint that I wanted to get the uh, dark green. And you're just looking at looking at the suspension of the front here. It's pretty standard stuff. It's just got springs, so it's not like uh well actually they do have the actual like cross what do they call those? The wishbones in there. So if you look at the suspension flex you can kind of see that uh, wishbone flexing as well. So the realistic suspension is a nice touch. And the rear actually has leaf springs on it that uh, mimic what these real muscle cars had back in the day, which is really nice to see. So what do I give this model? Well, I personally give this a full 10 out of 10 because – at the price point you're going to pay, you're going to kind of expect these kind of details for the money. And there are models that go far above this price point that offer you the details. Like you could pay $200, $300. You could easily be looking at $400 for an auto art model and not even get the same amount of details this thing has in it. I have some auto arts that aren't even this detailed, so... This gets a full 10 out of 10 for me and a full thumb, two thumbs up for me. Um, the fact that John Wick's car is finally in my collection and I wanted to get this over the Chevelle because this was the one that had more detail in it than the Chevelle did. Even though everybody prefers the Chevelle, he completely wrecks up in the second one. Um, I prefer the one that the thugs steal in the first one a lot more because I'm a sucker for Mustangs. And I really like this year. So, yeah, I'll say this. I'm more partial to his Mustang from the first movie. And uh, especially the fact that this is in the green. And a lot of people love Highway 61. I don't know what it is, but Highway 61 is a brand that a lot of muscle car enthusiasts go to. And the thing people don't realize is they were an offshoot of Ertl when they had all that detail, like the opening glove box and sun visors. A lot of the Ertl Authentics models actually had them kind of details. So I think Highway 61 kind of took a lot of the Ertl Authentics molds and they upped the ante a little bit and gave them things like the antennas that raise up and down and stuff like that. Of course, on mine, for some reason, the antenna's not wanting to uh, come up and down. But it's nice that the antenna's actually there. But um, very, very nice model. The only thing that's weird is how the drive shaft is not actually working. And maybe on this model, it, didn't, it wasn't intended to. But um, I really can't complain for the amount of details you get on this model and for the money you pay. The fact that the leaf springs work, the uh, suspension flexes, and that this is an extremely well done piece. I know I'm kind of rambling on and it's been about 24 minutes here, but... I got to say what a nice piece this is. And uh, I'm going to let you all go. Remember, if it has to do with die cast and reviews, it has to be the J-Man 6-3. Y'all have a good one. Bye.